Hi, this is Mrs. Cribb. I'm going to talk to you about Chapter 8B. Hopefully, um, and during lab, you had Chapter 8A and you went over the oxidation rules. Um, we will review them as we go through things in the future, so don't be too worried about it. Just keep practicing. We'll have lots of practice for this chapter. Here's where we're going to begin today's lecture on Chapter 8B on nomenclature. Um, International Union of Pure and Applied Science, these guys up here, IUPAC, developed a way to name compounds and this is called nomenclature. Just it's a distant oh, thing that says how do you name stuff. Um, we're going to start off by learning about binary covalent bonds. Bi means two, right there that means two, so we're talking about two elements and covalent Co working together to fill that valent shell. That's where they're sharing nonmetal and nonmetal. Remember that? Metal, nonmetal. Hopefully you said ionic. Um, that these are binary compounds that are not acids and they're named with Greek prefixes. Okay, these are the Greek prefixes right here. Mono, di, tri, tetra. Hopefully you recognize that from a tetrahedral. Tri from like trigonal. Penta five, like a pentagon, hexa, hepta, octa, octopus, nona nine, and then deca ten. You have to memorize these guys right here. I am not going to give you these on the test. You must know them. The Greek prefixes are going to be used with covalent molecules. The Greek prefix system indicates how many of each of the element in a binary covalent compound. Mono, the, co the prefix mono, is not used if there's only one of the first element. Also, you can change the second element's ending to I. Also, you do change. So, you start off whatever it is and you change the second element's ending to I. So, let's look at this first one. First of all, this is not cobalt. Remember, um, capitalization rules. Um, this is carbon and this is oxygen. Cobalt would be C little o. So what you do is you write the name of the first element, carbon. So it's really important you know these names, carbon. And you write the name of the second element, oxygen, except you only have one of the second element. So you don't say monocarbon. That's what this is. Mono is not used if there's only one of the first element. But you do say mono for the second element. So monooxide, well, oxygen, monooxygen, but you don't want to have O and O, so it's just monoxide, carbon monoxide. What happens is the oxygen word, the second element, you change the ending from oxygen to oxide, that the endings change to ide, so carbon monoxide. Okay, now we're going to do example 8-5. Now this right here, this flow chart, um, it's on page 189. You can use it if you want to, but uh, we talk through it a lot. I mean, we just go every single time I'll talk you through the process. So 8.5 tells me to name this compound right here, PCL5. And, and this one is super easy, PCL5. We use Greek prefixes. Do we say monophosphorus? Everybody should have said no. We say phosphorus, phosphorus for us. And then this is chlorine. And so I'm going to write this word up here. C-H, whoops. Yeah, that's right. C-H-L-O-R-I-N-E. It's chlorine changes to chloride. So the ending is going to be chloride. But how many of them do I have? Five of them. So I've got to tell you to use five of them. Five is penta. So phosphorus penta chloride. All right. Now I want you to see that you could go backwards with this. If I said, what is the formula for phosphorus pentachloride? You'd say phosphorus. Oh, that's a P. Pentachloride. Chloride is chlorine. And then penta means I need, I have five of them. Phosphorus pentachloride. All right. So you use Greek prefixes with covalent molecules. All right. Greek prefixes with covalent molecules. Greek prefixes with covalent molecules. Greek prefixes with covalent molecules. Hopefully you got that. All right, now we're going to move on to the binary two element ionic. Metal, nonmetal, ionic. Metal, nonmetal, ionic. So we're talking about ionic bonds now. And 
in this case, you do not use prefixes. And I usually like to write the word ionic um, like this. Ionic with a humongous I. Ionic. Because this I reminds me of the Roman number one. Because ionic molecules can sometimes use Roman numbers. And it's only going to use the Roman numbers. I don't know why I put apostrophe there. Let's get rid of that thing. Uh, um, it's only going to use Roman numbers if the molecule, I'm sorry, the atom you're dealing with has more than one possible oxidation state. And so we will deal with that when we need to. Um, we'll practice that a good bit too. So. Okay, so ionic compounds need Roman numbers. Um, I told you about this chart on page 190. Let's go ahead and go through a couple examples. Magnesium is a metal and oxygen is a nonmetal. Metal, nonmetal, ionic. So I know that's always the first thing you need to do. The first thing is check and see is it ionic or covalent? So if it's ionic, then you use ionic rules where you may need to use Roman numbers. So magnesium and oxygen. All right, you do not use prefixes, but and you, the reason is you really don't need them. So first I'm going to write magnesium down here. All right, there's magnesium. The ending still changed to ide, so oxygen becomes oxide. But what I need to do is check and see, does the first element, does the first element have more than one possible oxidation state? So we're going to use Roman numbers when the first element which is usually the cation. There's one or two exceptions. Has more than one oxidation state. And later on in the, the notes it talks about these as well. We'll, we'll see this again. So I'm going to pull up the periodic, I mean sorry, the oxidation chart. Hopefully I have it here somewhere. Uh, Nope, that's the homework pages we're going to be looking at. There it is, oxidation chart. There's magnesium. Magnesium has a plus two charge. This number right here is the charge. This no, Notice these are the group two, group two molecules or elements rather, and those have two valence electrons. And when you lose two electrons to, to get to your lower level, to gain the octet, you, if you subtract two negatives, you get a positive. So everything in group two has a plus two charge. Everything in group one has a plus one charge because we lose one valence electron. So magnesium has a plus two charge and oxygen has a negative two charge. Now you may have noticed when you did the oxidation rules that oxygen could be positive if it was bonded to fluorine because fluorine's the bully, the one that always takes electrons. And oxygen also could have a negative one charge if it's bonded to hydrogen. Um, that's the two exceptions right there. But most all the time, 99% of the time, oxygen is a negative two charge. So there's not more than one oxidation state for magnesium. And really, to use the, the Roman numbers, you only have to look at the cation, the positive ion. So magnesium oxide is all we need to do. Now, I'm going to prove to you that if I have this name, I could go back. I say, oh, look, what's magnesium? Mg. And what's the oxidation state of magnesium? I always write that on the above it, plus two. What's oxide? Oh, that's oxygen. What's the oxidation state of oxygen? Negative two. These already add up to zero, so I don't have to swap and drop. I, that would be the formula that I would get. Okay, let's look at this one. Aluminum and oxygen. Aluminum, I'm gonna go look at that oxidation chart again. There it is. Uh, aluminum, there's aluminum right there. Do you see it? It has a plus three. Now you should have this oxidation chart in front of you as well. It has a plus three charge and oxygen has a negative two charge. So ox aluminum only has one charge so I don't have to do anything special to it. It's just going to be aluminum oxide. And hopefully this is review from uh, physical science, Re aluminum oxide. Now, if I have this name, can I get back to the formula? Well, aluminum is Al. The oxidation number is a plus three. I got that off that chart. Oxide is O. The oxidation number is a minus two. So now, in order for it to equal zero, I have to swap and drop, swap and drop. So take just the number and put it down here. Take just the number, not the charge, because all we're trying to do is figure out how many of these guys do I need. So that means Al2O3. Just take the numbers and crisscross. 
swap and drop. Okay? All right, example 8-6. Okay, I have my textbook in front of me, and I didn't ask you to bring yours. So this just says to name C A I sub 2. All right, name this. Well, what's that thing? That's calcium. And what's that? Iodine. Remember, iodine or iodine turns into iodide. The ending turns into iodide. Calcium iodide. I don't have to say diiodide because calcium, and we'll go back and look at that chart again, calcium is right here. It only has a plus two charge. There's not more than one option. So if calcium is a plus two, that's going to tell me iodine has to be a negative one. Now you see iodine has more than one possibility. It has a positive one, a negative one, and a positive five. In fact, all of these possibilities are the majority of them, but it's not all. You're going to find some extra possibilities. And if we come across those, we'll add it to our chart. But if calcium is positive, iodine has to be negative. That's the only way for it to add up to zero. So let's go back. So calcium iodide, that's all it would have to be, calcium iodide. Oh, I lost my pen. There it is. Okay. All right, just calcium iodide. Now, if I had this name, can I get back to here? Well, I'd say calcium. And calcium is a plus two charge because that was what was on this, this chart. Calcium in column two, plus two. And iodine. And it has to be in the negative one because we have to have a positive and a negative. That's the only way to add it up to get to zero. We swap and drop. Take just the number, swap it and drop it. Take just the number, swap it and drop it. So it becomes CAI2. I could get right back to the name. Okay, now we're going to deal with polyatomic, more than, more than two ionic compounds. When you have a polyatomic ion, um, you're going to have to follow the ionic rules, okay? polyatomic ionic compounds. All right. There's going to be a bunch of polyatomic ions that you need to memorize. And I, I said to memorize the following, and I'm not going to write them all right here. They are in the study stack on the um, notes Prezi. And Mrs. Brandon would have used the Prezi for you yesterday. So um, they're in the study stack on that Prezi, and that's the ones you need to memorize. There are a bunch of them, but um, you can handle it, and we're going to go through some tricks to help us to memorize those. All right, anions. Now, what kind of anions? What are anions? Negative ions that contain oxygen and one other element are called oxy anions. Oxy for oxygen, anions. If there are only two forms of the oxy anions, the form with fewer oxygen atoms ends in ite, and the form with more ends in eight. Um, one of the ways I say is eight, eight ite, eight, eight ite. Eight is bigger, so it, it can consume the ite. Eight, eight ite, eight, eight ite. Bigger eats smaller. So um, an example, let me get a couple examples from the chart that I want you to memorize. Okay, here I went and wrote some down. Um, you're talking about 8 8 it. Okay, let me change the color real quick. I wrote some down here. What we have here is the bromate and the bromite. Okay, this is an oxyanion. It has oxygen in it and it's negative. Remember 8 8 it. That means 8 has more oxygens than it. The 8 has 3 and the it has two. Now, what if you have something like this, where there's more than two possibilities? This is four possibilities. Well, then you have per bromate that has the more, the more, and hypobromite has even fewer. So the put it in order, you would say per, and then eight, it, and hypoite. And you do need to know this: per, per, um, per eight. 8, it, hypoite. If you only have two, you only deal with these two guys. But if you have four, you got to deal with all four of them. Per 8, 8, it, hypoite. Per 8, 8, it, hypoite. Hypoite. 8, 8, it, 8, 8 is bigger than it. Um, 
and then I think somebody drew a picture of an alligator somehow um, eating it. It's like like eight and eating eight. But I really don't remember exactly how it was. So if somebody comes up with a good picture, that one's pretty awful. Uh, let me know. I just say eight, eight, eight. Eight is bigger than eight. Per eight, hypo eight. Per eight, hypo eight. Per eight, hypo eight. Hypo means below. So it's below the eight, and that's why I wrote it like this. So per bromate, bromate, bromite, hypobromite. Okay, I'm going to stop this thing and write a few more examples from the chart, okay? So hold on just a second. Okay, I went and got these two guys. All right, see if you can figure out this. This one has more and this one has less, but there's only two of them. And so this is nitrogen, so it'd be nitrate. And eight, 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 so this would be nitrite. This is nitrogen, eight and eight. Nitrate, nitrite. And these are two of the ones you have to memorize. And these are four of the ones that we have to memorize as well. So there's also permanganate. That the permanganate's a weird one. It is on that study stack. It's MnO4 negative. That's permanganate. You just need to memorize that one because we're going to use it a lot. Um, and then there's a bunch of other ones on there. Chromate is a uh, CrO3, and this one has um, a minus two charge. Okay, all right. So those are the polyatomic ions. Go to this right here. Spend some major time on that study stack. In the Prezi, it's on that first slide with all the study tools, and those have all the polyatomic ions that you need to know. Okay, now examples from the chart. That was what we just did. Now we're going to do 8-7. So example 8-7 says to name this guy here. This one's actually really easy. If you look at your polyatomic ion chart, that's what you're going to need for this. You're going to use a bunch. I think we're going to have a race with it on one day. Here is the thing we're going to name. All right, look on your polyatomic ion chart. All right, I pulled up one on the internet that's not exactly like you have, but it does have it. All right, the first one on here, you see NH4. You've got to learn, the reason we're memorizing them is you've got to recognize them pretty fast. First of all, one way to recognize them is more than two types of atoms are here. We have four types of atoms. This guy right here is a polyatomic ion, and this guy right here is a polyatomic ion. All right, we just named this one up here. This one is bromate, but what's this? If I look on NH4, on, the, on your polyatomic ion, here it is. That's ammonium. Ammonium. It has a plus one charge. We've actually been dealing with ammonium a lot um, in class. So ammonium. Ammonium is one of those things that if we did the Lewis dot structure, it was like this. And uh, no, sorry, like this. There we go and it had plus charge out there and the shape was tetrahedral so this is ammonium so the name of this thing is ammonium oh shoot I forgot to spell it how do I spell it y'all forgive me for that I a m m o okay okay o n i u ammonium and then whatever this guy is which is bromate and that's all you got to do. It is super easy to name these things. You just name the two polyatomic ions. Ammonium bromate. Now there's there's only one ammonium ion and one bromate ion in this. And ammonium has a plus one charge and look at the bromate ions charge. A minus one. When you add those two guys together you still get zero. Alright now let's do 8-8. -8. It says what is the formula of potassium dichromate? So I'm going to write the word potassium dichromate. We got to figure out the formula of this thing. Well, what's potassium? That's easy. K. Dichromate. Okay. I'm, I'm hoping there's one on this particular chart that I pulled up. Uh, yes. Yay. Right there. Dichromate. Now, normally you might think chromate, two chromate ions, but this is di dichromate is another weirdo. That's why you got to look at this polyatomic ion chart and memorize it. The dichromate ion has a seven has seven oxygens in it. So um, 
dichromate ion on Cr2O7 2 minus. Cr2O7 2 minus. So Cr2O7 and it's a minus 2 charge. Well potassium, if you look again um, at your oxidation chart, potassium is right here in the first column. It has one uh, a plus one charge because it has one valence electron. So potass potassium has a plus one charge. All right, so this is one of those cases where the ions don't have the same charge, we, so we need to swap and drop. So we take the two and we put it down here, and we just have one, so it ends up being K2Cr2O7, potassium dichromate. All right, I know this is a lot to take in, and we're going to practice in a few minutes. So we're, you're going to spend most of the class working together practicing and um, I will be giving you the homework to do as well um, in class together as well as I'll send you some uh, other things to work on it. Okay, ionic compounds with multiple oxidation states. Hmm, I tell you what, I think I'm going to stop right here and we will pick up on this when I get back from vacation. So we'll pick up right there. And that way you just have to cover the um, first set. You have to cover the covalent, ionic, and then the polyatomic ions. Okay, we'll deal with the multiple oxidation states when I get back. Okay, now the next thing I want you to do is look at the homework um, for chapter 8b. Ionic, here's binary ionic compounds. I can't write on this thing because it just wouldn't show up. Um, but binary ionic compounds, you're going to at least use Roman numbers, ionic, big I, Roman numbers, and you're going to try to name them. Like this first one is uh, barium chloride. Barium only has one charge possibility, so I don't need to do anything weird to it. Um, I guess I do need to do multiple oxidation states because I can see them right there. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's go back. Forgive me. Multiple oxidation states, I guess we'll cover that. All right, multiple oxidation states is just the same thing with the ionic ones, except now if you look at the periodic, I mean, sorry, the oxidation number, look at these guys here, like chromium. It has a three, a two, and a six. It could be a plus three, a plus two, or a plus six. Iron is notorious. Copper, notorious. I would circle iron. I would circle copper because you're going to use that a lot, and chromium. Iron, it could be a plus two or a plus three. So we have to take care of that when we're doing our work. So example eight and nine has this thing right here. Mercury. Okay, now how would we name this? First of all, this is mercury. Uh, and mercury, if you look in here, find mercury HG. Oh, help me. I wish I could hear you. Probably somebody's yelling it out. I'm blind. I'm really blind. There it is. HG. It could be a plus two or a plus one. So I need to be able to tell you in the name which oxidation state I need to use. Am I going to use a plus two? or a plus one. So I'm going to just write it up here. This could, mercury could be a plus two or a plus one. Which one am I going to use? Well this is da -da -da -da, the bromate ion with a minus one charge. So this guy has a minus one charge. But I have two of them. So the whole total negative charge is two times a minus one. That's a negative two. So there's only one mercury, so it's got to cancel out that negative two, so it has to be a positive two. All right, so I need to put that in the name because this is metal and um, non-metals are in here, but so we're going to use the ionic rules. The first element, the cation, has two possibilities. I have to tell you which one to use. We're going to do mercury, and you put the, the charge that you're going to use in parentheses. And as Roman number, mercury 2. This means use the plus 2 charge. That's what it means. It does not mean there are two mercury atoms. Look, there's not two mercury atoms. There's only one. This means use the plus 2 charge. Mercury 2 bromate. 
That's the name of this thing. Mercury 2 bromate. Okay, these numbers tell you the charge, not how many atoms. All right, let's do example 810. What is the formula for this? Lead, lead is also notorious for doing this, lead to phosphate. Okay, lead, PB. You got to learn these weirdos, guys. This does what? What is that telling me? The charge. So it's the plus two charge. And then what is this? That's the phosphate ion. So you, then you'll have to go look at your polyatomic ion chart and find phosphate. It's, there it is, phosphate. Now your polyatomic ion chart looks different than this one, but it'll have the same answer. Phosphate, PO4, three minus, or minus three. It has a minus three charge, PO4, three minus. So PO4, and the charge for this phosphate is a minus three. All right, these guys don't match. So I'm going to have to swap and drop. Three goes here. The two has to go over here. But we got to put everything in parentheses because this two is multiplying this er, the entire phosphate molecule. I mean phosphate ion. This is this. We have actually three leads. And they are bonded to two phosphates. Each lead has a plus two charge. And each phosphate has a minus three charge. You add those babies together and you get a plus six and a minus six. And plus six minus six equals zero. And that's what we need. We need it to equal zero, the zero sum rule. Okay, I'm hoping that will be enough for you to do your homework and I will begin to hydrates um, and binary acids when I get back. So let me look at the homework pages one more time. Uh, there they are. Yeah, we got Roman numbers for ionics and then here you're going to turn the um, names into formulas. And then you're also going to have covalent ones. Turn the formulas into names, and then the names into formulas. Work together, please, and get as much of this done in class as you can. I will send the keys to you, and um, this will be part of your homework for next week to finish it up. All right, good luck, guys. I will see you next week. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.